are ghosts in the boreal forests of North America. In the thick vegetation of the North Country, the ghosts manifest each September only to haunt the days and nights of the living. So this morning, it's raining. Can't really get out and hunt and film in the rain too much. And uh, anyway, driving out to one of my happy places to spend some time till it quits raining. And uh, driving along here, I'm like, huh, this thing's pulling really hard one way. I wonder if I got a flat. Get out, flat tire. Second flat I've had this year. Um, last flat I had, the tire was ruined. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope for this tire. I feel like it's probably shot too, so. Um, yeah, well, I guess it's time to do some man and uh, put my spare on. <laughs> the cool part is, is it's raining. I love rain, so um, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna put the spare on and then turn around and go back out this nasty old road that gave us a flat <laughs> and hope we don't get another one and uh, head back to town and see if we can get it taken care of. So, yeah, super pumped, super pumped. So, here we go. Guys, we have been sitting in the truck literally all day long. Um, blew a tire out first thing today in the rain, changed it in the mud, threw it in the back of the truck. We've just been socked in with fog and rain all day, so we've just been kind of laying low. We finally quit raining. We probably got about an hour before dark and just testing a couple spots here and a vertible bugle and chuckle um, way off. So. Uh, that's good. That's good. Heard our for, first first bowl of our hunt, and uh, I always wonder. I always worry every year. Is this is this gonna work again? Is this are they gonna answer my calls? And and they did. So uh, that's a good thing. So in the morning, um, we're gonna walk, do a lot of trail walking, and then we'll probably jump off off trail and get down into the down into the brush. It's gonna be miserable wet because this country doesn't dry out very quick so it'll probably be wet for a couple days up here even if it's nice tomorrow and the next day so anyway we're tr really trying to locate a bull for tomorrow and uh, had a bull answer my uh, my big nasty lip ball and aggressive chuckles so for whatever reason I like that so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot again see if we can hear him he's way across the canyon <laughs> Well, I think we must have got a courtesy chuckle because he's not answering now. So that's okay. We know where he's at. Maybe in the morning, hopefully, he'll be closer to the trail. He's off down several hundred feet below the trail now. So hopefully he'll get curious and hungry and climb up towards the trail and, and uh, you know, want to have a little bite to eat and be waiting for us in the morning. So anyway, we're going to continue to look, see if we can hear any more bugles tonight. And uh, that, that way we can get our 
our fix for tomorrow morning. We're gonna hunt probably half the day tomorrow and then we gotta head to town and buy new tires. I'm um, heck with it. I'm gonna just buy a new brand new set of tires. I don't have time to mess around with this. But tires are incredibly expensive. If anybody's a tire sponsor or a tire company and wants to sponsor me, <laughs> message me. I go through a lot of tires. I need some good ones. So anyway, tomorrow I'm gonna go buy some new BFG mud terrains and then the games will begin. sneak over there and see if we can fool him into call him coming in shooting him but I don't know it's cold it's super cold it's 33 34 degrees this morning so he should hopefully he should play with us Big boy pants on now. Brushy, steep, wet, nasty. <sighs> Love elk hunting.
said they heard that bull bugle yesterday morning so he's still bugling but he left anyway a buddy of mine told me he's seen the track the road yesterday stopped and bugled and heard this bull over here so we've been pressing through the jungles here to get him and, but uh he didn't want to be got, so shoot. Thank you, thank you, Dusty, for <laughs> wading through this nonsense. We both fallen down a couple times. Oh shoot, that was awesome. That was I, wish, I wish, wish he could have got a little madder and came in. Yeah. He just he wouldn't do it. But that's that's elk hunting. That's elk hunting. That's it for the night. Um, no bugles, no bugles tonight. We covered some tons of new country. Um, hit some old, old favorite spots. Nah, nothing. No tracks. No elk. No sign. No bugles. Talked to a guy. He's been there for three weeks. Um, he said he's only heard a couple, three, a couple bulls bugle in three weeks. Um, pretty, pretty sad. Um, where he's at, he's covered up in wolves, he said. There's a bunch of wolves around, so I think he should move, but he's gonna, he's gonna stick it out till the end of the season. So, anyway, we're continuously moving, checking new areas, um, and then I think it's timing too, you know. I think there's bulls hearing us, I just don't think they're talking. I think they're kind of, kind of stuck in their little spots, you know, their little hidey holes. Got lucky with that bull this morning that talked. We got him going. He wasn't ever to get, he never really got mad. 
never really gave you that bugle like, oh man, he's mad. He did come in. He came 60 yards, raked a little bit, but <clears throat> I think out of curiosity more than anything. But uh, I wish I'd had an open shot and a little bit closer shot because he was a beautiful, heavy, heavy horn, black horn bull. But anyway, tomorrow's a new day. We're going to try somewhere different. Just eliminating ground right now and eliminating the places where elk don't bugle till we find one that does. So, anyway, tomorrow we're going to hit it again. Till then. That's all I have to say about that. That was real good. My mama said. We checked all the low-hanging fruit before we strapped on our packs. We're gonna hike down here and uh, follow our onyx to the spot I have marked and uh, see if we can find the bull. Um, today's a different day. I mean, it's been really quiet in the woods. Um, the last few days, there's no birds chirping, no bees buzzing. Um, it's kind of weird. But today we have we've been hearing birds we've been hearing bees we've been hearing flies so i don't know if it's just the temperature swing it's like a little warmer today or if it's a barometric pressure thing or what but today the bulls are bugling so that's good hopefully they continue to bugle hopefully we just don't get sucked down into the canyon and not hear any more bugles so <sighs> wish us luck a ridge between us and that bull he's on the back side of it so we're just gonna keep on walking it doesn't sound like he's moved at all we'll keep wading through the brush this place is a mess super steep super brushy i know what dusty's thinking right now dusty's thinking i'm crazy to follow this idiot around <laughs> Surely there's an easier way to kill elk. <laughs> uh, unfortunately up here, I don't think there is. This is it. We gotta quit playing checkers and start playing chess. We're gonna wait in the wings here and um, wait till the wind changes. It's got a steady downhill wind. The elk seem like they're still quite a ways below us. I thought it sounded like we had some side hill, but we heard one over here. It's more below us, so we're gonna sit here quietly for till the wind changes. It might be an hour or so, but that's what we gotta do. So anyway. Hang tight. I think Dusty needs a break anyway. I mean, I could go all day like this, but he's not in very good shape. Oh, you're a machine. <laughs> this is not really. Just always work harder. This is. Yeah, we just gotta work harder. That's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just sit down, and take a breather here, and have a little snack, maybe listen for bugles, but. Uh, this is this is the zone. This is the man. I see like ton. Like everywhere I look, there's a bunch of old rubs. Um, just up the hill behind us, there's tons of old rubs from the olden days. But we passed a couple fresh ones. Um, 
can't imagine how good this must have been back when there were no wolves. It's probably pretty awesome. That's what the old, old timers tell us. But anyway, let's take a let's take a break. Let's take a break. I bugled and 
nothing, nothing, but we could hear, start to hear brush popping. I seen antler tips coming. And uh, we were just in a bad spot, so I moved up. He started raking, I moved up, moved up, and then he kind of spooked off, but he's not super spooked because he's still, he's still bugled a little bit. So, um, I think we'll give him an hour or two to forget about all this thing and go, go lay down somewhere else. We'll, we'll find him, and I don't think that's the same bull that we've been hearing. The other bull was on the back side. It's on the back side of that ridge. Now he's wondering where the heck we're at. He's bugling. Hey, where are you guys at? There's kind of a little creek draw coming up, and the closer the creek you get, the more brush there is. So, be nice to get out of this stuff, but without just charging headlong into that creek. Just try to get through the creek and then sit down on the other side of it. Who knows? Maybe he'll come over to us again. Here's busting brush. Oh, <laughs> 
alcohol is crazy. Weird estrusy type cow calls just trying to stir up something. I swear we heard another bull up over here this morning, but he's just not talking. Just trying to get him to break loose and talk just once to just let us know to stick around. But um, I'm gonna probably stay here and continue to call for about 30 minutes. Just kind of see what happens. Sometimes when I just sit here and call off and on for about 30 minutes, you just sit kind of sit tight. It'll get a bull coming our way or get a bull talking somewhere. So um, we'll see. We'll see. We got our moose call working for us this morning, so that's good. <laughs> I wish you guys could have seen it better, but two big moose, one giant moose, one okay moose, like a 35 inch, or the other one was 50 inches probably, and huge paddles, definitely a bunch of crocket moose. Wish we could have showed you guys a little better. <laughs> Well, we crawled up out of that hole. We sat around there for 30 plus minutes, doing a bunch of calling, hoping to fire something up. Nothing happened. So we called our way up for a while, up the hill, nothing. So we just put on our big boy pants and started hiking through brush. Let me tell you, <clears throat> I told Dusty, or I asked Dusty to, remind me about this next time I will say next year if I say I want to come hunt this place um, I said laugh and call me a fool <laughs> it's horrible this brush is nasty it's steep I hate to be a baby but it is gnarly it's we're we're in one of the least elk dense units in Idaho man there's got to be a better way it's got to be a better place. Anyway, we're going to walk down the trail. I said, yeah, we'll go out here and walk out here to the saddle and do some more calling. And he looked at me like I was an idiot. <laughs> I'll call one to the trail. Uh, the other side of the hill is not as brushy, so there's that. But it's steeper. Um, anyway, it's all downhill of there. But then he said it's all uphill to the truck. It's a very slight incline, so it'll be fine. It'll be easy. But anyway, we continue to pursue a giant bull. Or any bull that'll actually be bull. Answer the cow call. So I think what we'll do, I'll go grab our packs and our bows, walk down the same ridge that they're on, and just work our way down, cow talking our way down. See what happens. May just call one in. We haven't heard nothing. 
And since we've climbed down here, there's been no bugles, no movement at all. So we did some calling. We kind of got it situated here like we were bedded. Still nothing. I thought he might kind of come creeping in on us looking for, looking for those cows. This is it. This is for all the marbles here. We're gonna go down here and see if we can kick this bull up, get him up and, and uh, come into some calf calls or something. And uh, if not, it was fun. Um, who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. I think it's time for a little bit of luck.
animals I've ever seen. After a few close encounters, the hunter leaves the forest broken and downtrodden. What he doesn't realize is that the ghost bulls have somehow cast a spell upon him, only to be drawn back year after year. But what the ghosts didn't account for was that the hunter will be coming back with a renewed spirit and a new fire deep in his soul. The next visit to the Boreal Forest will be of retribution and revenge. 